G'day everyone, Connor McDonald here. The YouTube community reached out to me. Well, when I say reached out, they had a bit of a grumble at me because they said, you promised a follow-up video to adaptive cursor sharing a while ago and never followed through on your promise. And I realized that was true. Uh, I'll link the existing adaptive cursor sharing videos I've done in the past uh, in the description below. But at the end of each video, I promised a follow-up talking about the potential anomalies you might encounter and why you need to be aware of them. So, without further ado, I thought we'd finally tick off the fourth and last adaptive cursor sharing video. So we'll start with a table called T, and unlike the other videos, this time the table has a number of columns. The critical column, once again, will only be the primary key column. That'll be the one we do our interrogation on. But the other columns are gonna come in useful in terms of describing some of the issues with ACS. As before, I'll populate that table with 500,000 rows and all of the values just about have a value of 20 for the primary key, except for a small percentage of them. So we have some heavily, heavily skewed data. I'll put an index just like the previous demos and gather some stats to ensure that we have all the histogram information we need. As you can see, we've got a perfect histogram, a frequency-based histogram. Uh, see my other videos for why the frequency histogram is pretty much as good as we can get. To examine the histogram, we can run a simple query against user tab histograms, and we can see that this is the spread of the data. For the primary key values of one through 19, there is only one occurrence of each of those values in the table, and all of the rest are in value of 20. So the first thing we'll do to make sure our histogram is working exactly as we want is I'll run some queries through using literal values, not using binds. So we'll flush the shared pool and I'll try where primary key equals 10, there's only one value, and the database gets it spot on. It's using an index range scan. Now I'll try the literal value of 20 and we see there that it's once again doing a good estimate and coming up with a full table scan because it is almost all of the rows in the entire table. Let's flush the shared pool again, and I'm going to create a whole stack of bind variables now for our use later on in this demo. But for our first example, let's repeat our familiar ACS, which is a nice single bind variable. You can see I've seeded the bind variables two up through 15, just with a simple string, which is always true. They're not particularly relevant in terms of predicates here because they're always true and we have no histograms. It'll be the value of bind variable VO1 which comes into play for our adaptive cursor sharing. So I'll flush the share pool and set my bind variable VO1 to 10, which is a single row in the table. And here's a slightly different variation of the queries we've been running in the demo so far. We have just the one bind variable, PK equals VO1, but we have some other predicates thrown in there as well, which happen to be always true. You can see we got an index range scan, which is what we wanted for such a small amount of rows. And nice to see that we immediately got the fact that our bind variable is sensitive here is bind sensitive, is bind shareable, tells us that adaptive cursor sharing has kicked in straight away because the database has seen the frequency histogram on the primary key column. Flush the shared pool again, set the variable equals 10. This time the query is slightly different. I'm now using primary key equals VO1, but I've got some other bind variables in there as well. Because of the values I gave them, all that simple string of X, they're always true. So the query will actually still return a row. And as we can see, this query is still bind sensitive, which makes sense because that primary key column is critical in our predicates here. And now let's add a couple more bind variables into the mix. Now there are nine bind variables in use. Really the only critical one is the primary key column. The other ones there, as I said before, are always true. But look at the result we get. Once we get to nine bind variables or more, adaptive cursor sharing does not kick in straight away. It's important to be aware of that because if you have queries that have a lot of bind variables in them, then where you think ACS might be kicking in, it probably will not be. We have an upper limit on the number of bind variables that we will look to consider. I don't know exactly why this is the case, but I suspect the simple permutations of all the different bind variables we would have to consider in terms of letting ACS to come in and work in the best way to manage the plans, the potential plans, I think just gets too unmanageable. So we have an upper limit on how many bind variables that we will allow before we simply say ACS isn't going to be applicable here. Let's look at some other variations now. Once you start changing the query text around, you start to see some interesting variations on this theme. On this next query, I've got the primary key being the same bind variable VO1, 
but now I've got some of the other columns doing an in list here. So in this case, I've got C2 in VO2 and VO3. We run that a few times to get an index scan and we see that the bind variable is sensitive still, which is nice to see. Now I'll take that same query and make the bind variable a value of 20. Before, on the simpler queries, we saw ACS kicking in straight away. We run our query, we get the result, but notice this time we still use the index range scan. And we've sort of fallen back to a slightly older behavior of ACS where we have to actually run this query a few times. And then we get the new child cursor and the sharing of bind variables. Once we've done that, now when I run the query, we get to the desired plan, which is table access full. Let me flush the shared pool again and let's change the query up a bit more. Now I'll put a whole stack of bind variables, all of which don't change really the result of the query, but the number of bind variables is critical because now when I run it, I get an index range scan for the bind variable value of 10, but notice that it says it's not sensitive to binds anymore. And in fact, I might try run it a few more times just to see if that's gonna tick it over, run it multiple times over and over, it still says it's not sensitive to binds. Maybe I need to flick it over to the skewed value. So I'll try the value of 20, run that a few times as well. Is that enough to, to tick the optimizer over the edge? No, it's not. Once we get that large number of binds, no way are we going to flick into ACS. So it's those particular examples where you have huge number of binds that you need to be very, very careful with. Because now if I actually run that query, it ran fairly quickly, but it's actually slower than I desire because even with all those executions, I'm still running an index range scan for that skewed data. So that wraps up ACS. Still a wonderfully cool feature, so much better and a so much improved version of bind variable peaking from sort of decades ago, the Oracle database back in version nine. But be aware of the limitations. If you do have code with lots and lots of binds, you might be thinking that you're getting ACS when you might not be. If you have any questions, please reach out and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye for now.